whether you are in governance or developing power platform solutions, apps and flows, one of the, your main goals will be, of course, to have flows and apps that are going to live during a long period of time, are going to be used for a, quite a long time. Also, probably you will want to manage security and authentication in an efficient manner that doesn't cause any issues along the way. And that's why I want to talk about connections versus connection references and the implications that you are going to create uh, if you build your apps and flows directly from the maker portal versus you create them from a solution. If you don't know what a solution is, also you want to take a look at this video. So without more ado, let's walk into the slides and see what's going on in the platform. Hi, I'm Andres and welcome to my channel. Here we dive deep into the world of Microsoft Power Platform Development and Governance. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up to show your support. And if you're looking to develop solutions for your business or need training and support for your technical team, feel free to reach out through the link in the description or the pinned comment. Now let's get started with the video. One of the main functionalities of the Power Platform is its connectors, the way that the Power Platform can use services that are both Microsoft and non-Microsoft. So if you have been working with these tools, port, port apps, cam, uh, canvas apps, uh, portman flows, you know that you can integrate quite easily without any effort whatsoever to Teams, SharePoint, Word, Excel, etc. And if you are using other third parties like DocuSign, um, Google Connectors, uh, SAP, if you just solve the authentication, having your own credentials, you are good to go. You don't need to configure anything. Power Platform has thousands, literally thousands of connectors that you can use to access lots of services. And of course, you can create your own connectors to any other property services that are not exposed to the public or services that haven't been integrated yet with a connector. So basically, connectors are the central piece that the platform offers to connect to any services, any web services, whether they are in the cloud or on-premise on with an uh, on-premise data gateway. And so what are really those connectors? Well, technically, they are what's called a wrapper around uh, an API. So these services that we are connecting to SharePoint, Teams, SAP, DocuSign, whatever it is, they have their own API, which is the way that we can programmatically access those services. So those uh, APIs will have the definition of what it means to get items from a SharePoint list, to create a new item from a SharePoint list in a programmatic manner. And a connector, what it does is it puts it in an easy way so that we can consume it from a flow or a canvas app without thinking of any programming languages. That's the, of course, the uh, handy way to work with these uh, services with, with local technology, but also what is not often thought and it's behind the scenes is the connection, the security that is handled by these connectors. So when we connect to SharePoint or any other of these services, the connection that, so the way to use those services, we need to have a credential, right? User password or whatever it is, and that is handled via the connector. So we don't need to worry about that either. Now we have two ways of working with connectors in the Power Platform, and that is the, uh, let's call it the amateur way, uh, no offense uh, there, but uh, really it's not the way you should work with, uh, which is using directly the connector when you develop a flow or an app standalone there from the maker portal. We'll see what, what I mean by that. The most correct way, um, if you are if you are worried about it, I mean, if it's just a test, go ahead, do it there, there, there. But if you are trying to build something that is going to have a, um, its own life cycle, it's going to be used for a long period of time and you want it to be scalable, etc., easy to manage, well, you want to create a solution and create your apps and flows inside that solution. And when you do that, you will notice that you are not using the connector directly to the service. So we're not going to use that. We're going to use instead a connection reference. And we will see that in a moment what a connection reference is, which is basically an, another layer between the connector and, and the app or flow that it's consuming that service. All right, so let's take a look and see that how, how that works in the platform, actually. So we have here a flow that I just created for that, but uh, you know, if you go to make.portout.com or make.portout.com, aka the maker portal, you can create a flow directly from here. 
and that's fine for a proof of concept for a test. Uh, and if you go there, I have this open. Uh, let me open it here. If you go inside, uh, well, you start seeing if you take notice that here we have the connections that are being used, and it's totally very clearly these are connections. And if you go inside the flow, and you can hear, well, it's a class experience, but the same happens in the uh, in the new experience, you could go to the three dots, and here you will see the connections that are being used. And if you want to create a new connection and you click there, you will be prompted to the sign in. You probably are already familiar with this. When it prompts, it has a pop up where you have to authenticate, select the identity that you are authenticating with, which will be probably the single sign on that you have here with the Maker Portal. Okay, so each box here that we have in a flow, when we create it directly from the portal, we are going to be telling the flow you use directly this connection this action this sharepoint action use directly certain connection and if we have multiple sharepoint um, actions here each one can use connection uh, different connections connection one connection two connection three connection four and well it can be okay but let's imagine that you need to change connections your password is resetted well yeah then you need to uh, change the connection um, in multiple places as well. Uh, if you go here to connections, you can refresh the uh, credentials, but if you need to change the actual connections to another credential, to another user, for example, well, then you should uh, go one by one, which is not uh, convenient at all. Now let's compare it to how that works when we work with solutions. If you don't know what a solution is, you create them from here, you go to solutions, and then you uh, here, create a new solution and give a name, polish, etc. Let me know in the comments if you want to learn more about that. But what you end up with is, uh, let's say, let's call it a folder uh, where you have the different components, any apps, flows, database tables, uh, everything there grouped in the context of this solution, which then becomes a lot handier to, to work with. And when you want to create a resource, you create it directly here from this new button over here. You can create well, all these stuff, probably you, if you haven't worked with solutions before, you will see that there's much more to the platform than you thought. And uh, well, you will discover that as soon as you start working with solutions. So I have created this flow over here. And in the flow, you already see a difference. And is that it says here, connection references. And if we jump directly to the flow, and uh, let's pick the SharePoint one, you will see here that it says, it's a connection reference. And if I try to change that, I would create a new connection reference. And then behind the scenes, there is the connection. So let's see how it actually works. This flow uses different connection references, which we can see here. And where are they? They are, of course, inside the solution. So if I go to the solution, I see all these connection references. So the flow is using these connection references. And when I click in one of those, let's pick the SharePoint one, this connection reference is the one that is actually using the connection behind the scenes. So here I can pick the different connections, create a new connection. So let's say that, for example, I have created this flow uh, and it's a, a bunch of SharePoint actions and all use the same connection reference, this one over here. But now I have to change the connection instead of, it's, uh, instead of using my user, it uses a different user then I just need to create here a different connection and assign it to it. And then the flow will automatically, because it's using this connection reference, use a new connection. That of course then is an advantage by itself, but also taking um, in mind that if you want to deploy your development from development to production, you want to use a service account, all this stuff, you can only do that using a solution. So this is the proper way that uh, we need to use when working with core automated apps and flows. Looking for help? We can assist you with consulting, custom development, and training for your development or digital workplace team. Go to my website, fill out the contact form, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So we've um, talked about connections, connection references, and how important they are, whether you are in governance or developing your own apps and flows. And now I want to tease you with the content of the next video, which is about service accounts and service principles. So the way to handle authentication and the account behind the connections, connection references that we are working when we move to the production world. So we went from the, the development to production. So hang out and 
stay tight because the next video I think is going to be very important and you are going to enjoy it a lot. Thanks for um, reaching to the end and see you in the next one.